put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Just Cause 2 video game review. You are still playing as Rico Rodriguez and you are yet again sent to Team America the crap out of an island and send its dictator packing. This time it is the island of Penal, Southeast Asian, I believe, and the dictator Baby Penal, some, something like that. Now, the Actually, that just about does it for the plot. As with the first one, there's really not very much, and it definitely isn't very interesting. It's, it pig-headedly refuses to get interesting or even surprising. Like at first, I thought that it was going to be surprising, but no. Now, the, when the game starts, you have lost contact with your mentor Tom Sheldon and you do have to find out what is going on with him, whether he's turned and you need to deal with him or yeah, what, what exactly is going on there. Now, the, the name of the game here is flexibility. Basically, no matter where you are, and what you're doing, you have a, a number of different things you can be doing. You have a parachute which you can engage as long as you're moving fast enough or falling off, you know, j jumping from a high place. You know, you can, you can almost always shoot. The, the only time you really can't shoot is when you are... If, if you're in a vehicle that doesn't have a gun, and it's not like a motorcycle, because you can not really aim, but you can still shoot from, from there with a one-handed gun. So yeah, still not quite on the level of Grand Theft Auto on that one. And you have a... But, but yeah, you... You know, yeah, un unless you're base jumping or the like, you can always actually shoot, re regardless of the exact position or situation. Now, that, and of course, actually, I, th I think I will save that one for last. If you are on the ground or in water, you can use the black market, which, or, you know, use your cell phone to access, for example, the black market. It also has an extract feature, or extraction. You can extract to any area that you've uncovered, you've discovered, rather. And the, the map, the, the GPS map, has a a lot of little yellow dots, those are undiscovered settlements, and a lot of blue dots, and those are collectibles. Now, the moment you've discovered an area, you can immediately extract to there by using the cell phone, as long as you aren't on a mission or in heat. I think those are the only two situations where you can't. And this helps put a limitation on the, the the speed with which with which you move around and that's a good thing because there are literally hundreds of square kilometers here and there, there are those that say that you know it takes ages to get anywhere yeah if you're trying to get there without at all extracting yes that 
it's it's a way the game limits you from going, you know, everywhere from from right away because that really is rather intimidating for a, for an open world game. The the Grand Theft Auto games do this as well. Just there, it's usually like well, a bridge is is out or something like that. And once you've completed a certain amount of the story. Yeah, and in this one, you don't actually have to complete story in order to gain access to new areas. Now, the other things that the cells, when you use the cell, you also, you can also use the black market. And this, this is always, you, you can always use this, as long as you're like outside, because stuff will be airdropped, you can use this. You know, it doesn't matter if you're on a mission, you know, just yeah, doesn't matter at all. You can you can always do it as long as you can indicate a spot on the ground near you, and that's a great improvement from the first. Where if you could not like basically in the first, you didn't choose a spot. It just kind of went for wherever you were, and if it happened to not be able to it wouldn't necessarily tell you what, it would just say, you know, you are, it, it can't quite get a signal, please try somewhere else, you know, and yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't exactly know what to do in that situation, but here, just point to a place on the ground, you'll immediately get, you know, an, an icon indicating if you are, if you're able to use that spot. Now, the black market enables immediate order of any vehicle or weapon that you've unlocked. And it, it will be at a price, so it's maybe, you know, may, mainly for emergency use, otherwise it will bankrupt you in, in not terribly long. Now, the there are, if I recall, about 21 vehicles and six. I got that backwards, 21 guns and 16 vehicles to order. Now this is including the, the DLC and definitely get the DLC. It's just, yeah, it's it's ab absolutely amazing. It, it includes like a rocket launcher that allows you to lock targets. I think you can lock up to four targets and then when you let go of the trigger it will actually fire all of these rockets, you know, it has a propulsion air, air propulsion gun, which literally sends enemies flying, and this is not limited to like one enemy at a time either, and you can shoot the same enemy several times. So just you know, you can get him so high up in the air that by the time he lands, he'll have been so far up in the air that he'll die from the fall. And the you know, there are several vehicles that have like two guns with infinite am ammo. You can turn the turret completely, you know, independently. Of, of driving the, the car. The, the camera is still 360 degrees and this goes for pretty much if you aren't base jumping flying a helicopter at least you know parachuting or just regular shooting you have a 360 degree camera. Now I, sh I should specify the these vehicles with, with several guns and the like, that isn't only DLC, that's just in general in the game, there are, there are a number of these. And the last aspect of the, the high flexibility of this is the grappling gun, which has been improved from the first one. And it was, it was a ton of fun even in that, but this one is like, you know, way, way better. It's, okay, so basically it's on your left arm now. You can, let's let's try to build this up. You can 
you can use it just to tether two things together. And you can use this on pretty much anything. You can tether a, you know, there are all these statues of baby Penal around the, you know, the island. And you can tether the statue to a car. And if this car has enough, you know, you maybe want to use like a tractor or something. And you can then pull this statue apart. You know, so yeah, obviously it needs a certain amount of pull. So, so yeah, you can tether enemies to gas canisters and shoot the gas canister, and the enemy will, you know, be drugged by the the canister. You can you can use it to yeah, you can you can tether an enemy to a vehicle, meaning they get pulled out, you know pulled by that vehicle, yeah, there's just, there, there are a ton of, of different ones. You can use it to pull objects or people closer to you, so if there's an enemy like high up above you, you can just pull him down, He'll, he might die from the fall. You know, you can pull enemies out of their cars, which is also likely to kill them just from that. If you pull an enemy through the air, you can shoot him in the air to, to kill him like that. And you can, you know, if, if you're parachuting, you can use the, the grappling gun to slingshot yourself. Basically, yeah, it'll, it'll pull you closer to whatever you went to, and you can then disengage the parachute, and it'll pull you closer. If you use the, the grappling gun to pull you closer, then it doesn't matter how high up you were, it completely eliminates fall damage. You can you can pull yourself to not only the ground, any any flat surface, yeah, any any not only any horizontal flat surface, but any vertical, you know, as long as well even flat surface not even only flat surfaces, if it has a surface, you can pull yourself to it pretty much. You know, any any building, you can climb buildings or rappel down them by aiming somewhere on the building. And a lot of buildings are built specifically for this, like they'll have several angles to them. So, you know, you can, yeah, you, you can shoot higher up or, you know, yeah, at, at an angle and use this to to climb the building literally and yeah and as with the first you can use it to pull yourself to a vehicle which you can then you know take over and if the vehicle has like a straight up pilot or driver if it's not like a motorcycle or the like you will be engaged in this you know, quick time event kind of thing where you fight them for a little while until, yeah. And and if you succeed, you will take over this vehicle, and that puts a nice. I mean, quick time events aren't exactly popular, and with fairly good reason. It's it's a bit more with some simplistic. It's more interesting if it's more if there's more depth to it, but here when you're taking over the a vehicle like that you you do have to worry about being shot at and maybe also if the guy was driving fast and if he was driving in a straight kind of you know path or if he was headed towards something because yeah it you know, he, he can't exactly steer the vehicle properly while you're trying to, you know, pull him out of it. And anytime you miss, he will punch you instead of you punching him. And this takes a chunk out of your health. And this literally does mean that if you completely, you know, if you screw it up several times in a row, you might just die, not only from him taking away your health, but also from you being kind of stuck in that position until you have taken over the vehicle. And yeah, others can shoot at you. And again, if you're not, if the vehicle wasn't moving fast or like in the air, or like, 
yeah, you're a sitting duck right there, so you want to, you know, speed it up, which, again, makes it more interesting. And the quick time events are, it'll also engage in them if you're interacting with a computer, and this is for, you know, unlocking a door, disarming a bomb. There are a number of things that this is used for. And, yeah, this is the... You know, for, for that it has, uh, you know, a countdown, a, a bar that quickly recedes. And, and as you get further through the game, these will be longer. I mean, at first you're like, is this seriously all I have to do for these quick time events? But as you get further, it will add more numbers to it. It's, it's always like, I think it's the first, yeah, the first four numbers or so. And and in that, if you fail, you just have to start over. And yeah, sometimes there's a different time limit. Like I said, disarming bombs, some of these do have a time limit. So if you don't do it in time, you actually will just have to do it all over again, you know, from, from the last checkpoint anyway. Now, where the first one really did not live up to Grand Theft Auto levels, this one, in some ways, does. This is Grand Theft Auto with freer, faster motion and a more non-linear approach to action. As I've, you know, explained, you can you can do a lot of different things. You know, if you see, yeah, I'll, I'll get more into that. But also losing compelling characters, you know, plot. Mission design is often kind of bland also, and a genuine lack of variety to missions. Now, to get more into the the action, like I said, you can take over pretty much anything that the enemy is using. You know, a mounted gun, a vehicle, and, and regardless of what vehicle, and the enemy does have access to all different kinds of, you know, they'll attack in the air from the sea, on the ground, and as you get further, the in, in general, just the, the difficulty increases as you get further. You know, you're making yourself more of an enemy to the government of Penal, so they dispatch more military when they know where you are, and as you're causing more chaos in that bit, like, I think I was about halfway through the game when, excuse me, I, ex I they, they would send several helicopters my way. So even if, if I took over one, I still have like three or four that I have to then, you know, fight off from my helicopter or, you know, I could take them over one by one, which again made me a sitting duck for the others. So, yeah, this is... I mean, that's something where it does go beyond what Grand Theft Auto offers as far as I've played, which is you know, basically, primarily, let's say, Grand Theft Auto 1, 3, Vice City, and San Andreas. But yeah, in those, I mean, you can get the military after you, but then once they do, they only have, like, the one intensity. You know, once they start sending tanks at you, they'll just keep sending tanks at you. There might be five at the same time, but... And also in this, when you're fighting military vehicles, they can always be destroyed. Like if you're if you're in a tank yourself, and enough of them shoot even small arms fire, it will be destroyed. Like there was one time where I was trying to just destroy a military base in a tank that I had stolen from the military base. And yeah, it actually they 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 ended up sending a lot of paratroopers towards me, and yeah, they took out the tank. I eventually had to find a different way to take them out. So whenever you're attacking something, pretty much whenever, you have a lot of different options at your disposal, and the challenge then comes from how many different elements there might be. Like if, again, military base, let's say you're attacking one of those, it might have a mounted gun, a SAM sight, again, one of these, you know, heavily armored vehicles. There might be, 
you know, enemies who have really powerful, you know, again, around the halfway point, they'll start actually using rocket launchers and the like. So, yeah, be aware of that. Be ready for that. And they'll have, you know, snipers. Some of them will be more armored than others. And a lot of these things, you know, about half of these things you can take over, as I've already mentioned, and others of them you do just have to take care of really quickly. And to even stay alive in this when you're under attack, you have to move around a lot, improvise, you know, keep them keep them guessing. If you just attack from one place, they they might just surround you and take you out. Especially if you're just going at it just, you know, with the the gun that you have in your hands and the like. Now the 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 plot is thankfully less repetitive than the first and it is a tad more detailed even if you know it's basically like I said it's it's pure cheese it's it's a typical kind of action the the whole thing is very much action blockbuster and yeah the plot is I mean the the dialogue is completely it's all one-liners and this kind of thing and yeah it's just not as compelling as these very very well characterized and interesting compelling characters of the, the Grand Theft Auto games. I, I haven't played one where the the characters didn't respond to you in some kind of interesting way and, and you know to situations and and the like. This does have a more of a double agent feel than the first. I, sh I should say in general this is the first one just done better. There isn't a huge amount of difference between this and the first. It is just fleshing out the, the stuff that was already there and yeah, fleshing it out and improving it. The, the first one was a bit rough around the edges. This is much more, yeah, you know, you, you don't feel bad about recommending this to people. It's, it's not just a guilty pleasure. But yeah, it, it has more of a double agent feel than the first in that you, you, you now have three factions that you're working for and while these are completely interchangeable, unlike the first where one was, you know, one was of freedom fighters and the other was drug runners, and freedom fighters needed you to take on you know, the government, whilst the drug runners wanted you to take out the, you know, there were basically two cartels, drug cartels, on the island, and you were working for one trying to take out the other. So, in that one, there was very much just neither of them at all affected the other. And while you don't see a direct effect here, it is very clear that they don't, you know, none of them know that you're working for the others. And the three do have different, like, well, yeah, actually, yeah, like I said, they're, they're basically interchangeable. All three have, have a leader who is corrupt, and at, at first I was like, oh man, this one actually has cutscenes for, you know, all mission briefings, not only, you know, the, the main, the, the agency missions, but also the faction missions, and the faction missions are no longer just randomly decided and completely superfluous in this one you actually do feel like you know you understand basically what you're doing you're not just sent out to you know like in the first there was a number of different types of missions and it would just randomly select between them and once you've done that for a little while you're like this is making no difference at all like, you know I can I can keep doing this forever and I'll never actually make a difference and in this you do have more of a you know each mission has 
specific set objectives. And like I said, there, there's not too much variety to them, but it is still more than just, you know, go do this thing for vague reasons. Now, the... But, but yeah, like I said, the, this one actually has cutscenes for the, the faction missions, the, the briefings. And at, at first, I was like, oh man, you know, that's an improvement. But then you realize they're completely interchangeable. The, the briefings are literally just of the, the person stating what it was, which they did in the first one as well. Just now it's also a cutscene. They don't just talk while you can walk around. You know, Half-Life style, that kind of cutscene kind of thing, with less detail. Yeah, anyway, they're basically just showing up, giving you some kind of weapon, and telling you this is what you have to do, and yeah, there's, there's no clever dialogue there, there's no interesting... Yeah, you know, I mean, Grand Theft Auto games, every single time you're asked to do a mission, there will be some kind of humorous or, you know, in, in some way memorable briefing with, yeah, with, with character, at least one character that you're, that you remember afterwards that's, that's fun. Now, that also goes for, like, the, the initial brief, like, when you first meet the, the faction leaders, it's literally just, you know, they say, ah, I hear you're good at doing stuff, you know, you can take people out and such. And, you know, Rigo's like, yes, the, you know, the guy says, I don't trust you, but you can work for me. Rigo goes, okay, that's it. There's, you know, they might as well have just had, you know, they, you, could, you could put them side by side. They're really isn't any, you know, noticeable difference there. Now, most of the missions, you know, basically, pretty much all of the, the missions, all outside of the stronghold takeovers, which I'll get more into, you go to a, a phone booth or the like to activate. So that's a nice, you know, very, very Grand Theft Auto kind of thing. Now the faction, the, the stronghold takeovers expand the faction influence, area of influence. They kind of, they, they give access to more missions and races and the like. And when the, the area of influence does also dis determine when you might get some assistance from you you know the the faction you've been working for so while this doesn't have the strange completely random battles between you know the the faction i think it was was it both it was at least freedom fighter in the faction and the the military where you could barely even tell like you'd hear someone shout you know freeze and you're like is he talking to me or one of those faction guys? This one doesn't have that big, you know, completely random thing, but if you're, like, fighting someone and you're within an area of influence, they might send, like, you know, a, a car with a mounted gun to, to, to aid you. Now, the... I guess that pretty much covers the effects of the stronghold table. Now, the way you do it is literally you're sent into a military base that you you basically have to escort a technician, a, a hacker guy, into the very heart of the stronghold, and you you know there there are some some faction soldiers there with you and you have to take care of the really big you know the the bigger problems along the way so 
sniper opening uh, a door where the, the panel to unlock it is on the other side of the wall, you know, a... Actually, I suppose that more or less covers it, but, but yeah, you... And yeah, these, these were pretty fun, although again, it's each time you do one, it's the same thing, basically. And yeah, and once the, the technician arrives at the computer he has to hack, you also have to protect him for a little while. And there might just be a mounted gun there that you can man or, you know, something similar. Now, once and any stronghold that you've helped take over is where you will come back to life when you die. If you weren't in, you know, on a mission or doing, doing a race or the like. Now this does also bring up, that's again where this is not quite as good as, as Grand Theft Auto. That is the only consequence, if you can even call that a consequence, because you can just extract wherever you were, you know, going. So yeah, that's, that's literally it. Like there were times where I just, you know, I, I just uh, had to extract somewhere and you know, there was a lot of heat, and 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 it was a long way, so it would take a while for me to travel there by myself. So I just let Rico die, and then extracted immediately once I came back to life. So yeah, but yeah, like I said, when if you're on a race or on a mission, and mission is especially where they have checkpoints along the way, and you will just you know go back to one of the, the most recent checkpoint when you die. And I really wish that Grand Theft Auto, maybe I, I haven't played like four and onwards yet, but yeah, as far as I've played, you just, you know, you have to go back and restart the mission. And, you know, part of it is also just the annoyance of having to go all the way, you know, travel from wherever you are, or wherever you saved, I like to load for it to, to not lose anything, but yeah. Now, that pretty much covers the strongholds, I would say. So, yeah, basically, missions come down to, you have to go somewhere, kill someone, destroy something, Escort someone, one or more of those, and I mean, in the in the first one, at least there would be, you know, sometimes several steps to it. In this one, it is sometimes literally just go there, and from there just do, you know, this or that, destroy something there, kill someone, something like that. So, yeah, that's a bit underwhelming in in this one, but and and it's especially. It's especially un unfortunate because when they actually do really get into a kind of when they when they actually do vary the objectives more, they do make for some really cool missions. Like again, this can do missions that Grand Theft Auto can't because of the grappling gun, parachute, all these kinds of things. So. Yeah, when they actually do it, I mean, there's, let's see, there, there is one where you're literally, there are several bombs on several different skyscrapers, and you have to move quickly between them to disarm all of the bombs, and there's an overall timer. And, of course, these bombs are also guarded by a few enemy soldiers and the like, so... Yeah, that's, you know, obviously much more interesting there. You know, there is one where you're, you have to go into an enemy base. You have to keep yourself alive there for a little bit. Then a an allied chopper will come in. You have to hang from that. You know, it'll then fly you towards three jeeps. You have to destroy two of them, still hanging from the chopper. So meaning you can only use one-handed weapons, 
then you have to take over the third of these jeeps and you have to drive it like a kilometer to safety because there's someone in there that you actually have to you know, pr protect and get safely to the, the final checkpoint. I mean, that's just, that's a ton of fun. And you really wish that all the missions were that involved. In fact, there, there really aren't enough of these time limits. And then there is, there's, there's one mission where it's literally three boss fights in a row, and each is distinct and memorable. Like, one has a vehicle that you, you have to deal with. One has a lot of armor and dodges as best he can, you know, explosives. So, yeah, now, some people have said that the boss fights are too tough in this. I disagree. I find that, in general, it is... The game is challenging, and the... You just have to use the different... You know, like with Grand Theft Auto, there are a number of different... different skills that you have to master in order to complete the game. And like Grand Theft Auto, that includes, you know, driving, mastering, driving these different vehicles. And here, it's also these, you know, the, the grappling gun, parachute. Yeah, these, these various things. Now, oh yeah, and, and another mission that was really a ton of fun. Whenever enemies are approaching, whenever enemies are aware of you, they will show up as icons on the GPS. So you can tell, you know, if you're trying to flee from them or, you know, not run from them, but run at them, you, yeah, you can see where they are roughly. And in one of these missions, basically you're protecting this radar dish, which was really fragile. So you basically couldn't let these enemy, I think they were all enemy choppers, you couldn't let them attack that radar dish because you pretty much just have to start over. So you had to use the GPS and fly close enough to them and destroy their chopper whilst also keeping your own chopper alive. You know, because if, if you don't have a chopper to take out their choppers in that situation, you're just, you're screwed. So... Yeah. Now, I've mentioned mounted guns some. When there's a mounted gun on the ground, you can literally detach it and walk around like, you know, Mac and Predator and just mow down the, the enemies in your path. Now, unfortunately, there does seem to be this frequent bug that if you put it down, you can't really pick it up again. And I know that you're supposed to be able to in part because the the, the yeah, hint thing told you that you could, I'm pretty sure, and early on I could do it, but yeah, for most of this game it wouldn't let me do that. And of course it does also limit, you can't run or jump when you're carrying it, nor can you, like, you know, you can, you can only use that one gun, you can't use any, you know, explosives, and you obviously can't, like, you know, use a vehicle grapple to somewhere and, and such and such. Now, the first one also had mounted guns on jeeps and the like. And it had a number of problems, or weaknesses, I should say, and they've pretty much all been fixed here. You can now actually... If, if you... If you're in stunt position on a vehicle, and you can always, any vehicle that you, yeah, any, any vehicle in the game, you can grapple to, and you'll then enter the stunt position. And from there, you, you can just, you know, jump off the, the, the vehicle, which, if you're in one of the stunt positions that, you know, that leaves you with your hand free, you know, there are, there are two types of explosives in this game, grenades and the C4 blocks. And the C4 has, the, has some adhesive on it, so when you throw it, it'll stick to what it, it hits. So you can jump onto, you know, an enemy 
like it's it's maybe especially the, the vehicles, but yeah, you can jump onto one of those, just drop C4, you know, get off the the car, get you know a certain distance away, and then trigger the explosive, and yeah, that's one way to take out and you know an enemy car, and yeah, so 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 that's good fun, but but yeah, the stunt position now also enables more movement, so if you're you know again like on an enemy car you can jump down in front of the hood and be going side to side so you can sort of use it as a shield in in a way from other like if you know if the car is being driven by some anyone ally or enemy and other enemies are behind the car trying to shoot at you you can both you know dug out from cover and shoot at them with any one-handed gun or you can you know crawl over to the other side to take more cover so so yeah and from this if you're trying to take over a jeep or a helicopter or the like you do have to kill everyone but the driver in that vehicle and that is also where this you know stunt position comes into play because you don't have to, you know, yeah, you can be on the outside of a vehicle shooting someone who's like ducking out and trying to shoot at you from in the vehicle. So, yeah. And again, if you lose a lot of health there, then you really have to be careful when you're trying to take over, when you engage the quick time event to take over the enemy vehicle. Now, so, so yeah, that covers stunt position. You can now engage a mounted gun from stunt position. You can also disengage this, you know, this mounted gun without leaving the car. You can go straight to a stunt position. You can also, I mean, you can jump to an enemy car, take over their mounted gun, Again, you know, if there's someone manning it, then you got to kill that guy first. But then take it over, take it over, turn it on some of the other enemy vehicles. Sorry about that. So yeah, from the stunt position, yeah, you can go back and forth between stunt position and manning the mounted gun. You can also still just go directly out of you know, just completely abandon the vehicle without going to stop position first. And you can always do this whether it has a mounted gun or not. And as far as I've been able to tell, regardless of what vehicle you're in, so, you know, you, you don't even have to go to a parachute if the, yeah, if even if the, the vehicle is going fast enough, if you don't want to use the parachute or not immediately at least, you don't have to go to see there's a lot of freedom to how you approach the different you know combat situations now as some have pointed out the third person camera is slightly awkward now the one of the main things you'll be doing in this game is blowing crap up like i said team america yeah now, it does actually have a point. It's not just collateral damage, although collateral damage, I mean, excessive force in the apprehension of baby Pinal has been proved. You know, if you accidentally or intentionally kill villagers or, you know, faction allies or the like, nothing seems to really happen from that, as, as far as I experience. I swear they were on accident most of the time. Now, yeah, you're, you're blowing stuff up because it'll increase chaos. You you have two kinds of currency in this. The first one didn't have any currency and it really suffered for it. In this one, the two kinds are the chaos and the regular money, and the money you use for buying stuff from the black market. But yeah, the the chaos 
literally means blowing stuff up, destroying government property. And this, you know, this is just regular, like I mentioned earlier, the, the statues of Baby Panay, it can be something like that. It can be a propaganda trailer, uh, you know, radar, uh, radio tower, you know, various things, military installations. And the, uh, I should mention that whenever you discover, uh, I think they're just called settlements until you know what they are. It can be a village, city, military installation, radio facility, harbor. Yeah, there are a, a number of different types. And each will have a certain amount of stuff you can destroy at it and some things you can pick up at it for, for upgrading. I'll get into that more. Now, the... I suppose that more or less covers the different settlements. So, yes, the... Lost my train of thought, but yeah. Chaos, I believe it was. You're causing chaos by destroying things and this literally means that you get closer to more faction missions, races, stronghold takeovers, and agency missions. So in order to complete the story of this, you literally will have to destroy a bunch of stuff. And yes, sadly, by the end of it, before you've quite completed the story, you will probably be bored with blowing stuff up and the like. Now, I believe any mission that you complete causes more chaos than, you know, destroying stuff. So if you focus on, like, missions and the like, you will get there faster. Now, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff for you to destroy. And once you've discovered an area, you can go back later to pick stuff up there or destroy, it's entirely up to you. And when you, I suppose this would be a good time to get into the, actually, yeah, so so yeah, there's not a lot of different, like it's, it's a vast world and it has several different, like there, there's rain, there's snow, the, yeah, there, there are some very different places around the, you know, around the island, like there's, there's forest, desert, you know, there, there are these tall snowy mountains, yeah, various ones. So, so it really does feel like a vast island, and I think it's basically supposed to be North Korea, the, the plenty, plentiful Asian stereotypes certainly hint at, at something like that, and yeah, it literally does just... Yeah, some, some of these areas I believe would actually be, actually are in, in North Korea. Now, the, yes, the, the, there's a bit of a lack of stuff you can do outside of missions, you know, I mean, there, there are the races, and certainly these are fun. If, if you engage one while there's, there's heat, you know, the enemy, the, the military is after, basically everything you do in this game directly ties into the, the main story, to taking over. The, the the island of Panau, or rather, you know, getting rid of baby Panau, whilst, you know, it increases government unrest by, you know, that's, that's what chaos is, you might say. And, yeah, anything you do is literally for that. Anything you can destroy will mean, actually, Yeah, will will 
get you closer to the next mission or the like and do more damage to the, the government control of the island of Penal. But yeah, outside, yeah, races, briefly just to, yeah, outside of missions and races, you really don't have a lot you can do. And that's where it does kind of, it is essentially just for you to experiment with the, the different things, you know. In some ways, it's almost more of a physics simulator than an actual open world game, you know, with just, you know, you, you trying out different things with the tethering with the grappling gun and, and the like. You know, where, where yeah, so, so getting back to the races, if, if you've watched any other of my videos, you're used to me jumping back and forth like this. It's, at, at the time, at, you know, currently, it is the only exercise I'm getting. So yes, the races, if you engage one while there's, there's heat, the heat is still there. So you can be doing a race while you're being chased by, you know, the enemy. And you, you can redo races any time. So, you know, if you've done a race and you feel like doing it again on heat, or if you're trying to do a race on heat and you, you know, yeah, you, you can choose. And there are, I played at least one race where there was literally the option of enemy, like there was a, a bonus checkpoint. On, you know, each of these races have a time limit. A, any checkpoint you pass, you, you know, get a little more time, and if the time runs out, you have to do the race over again. And yeah, there, were, there was a bonus checkpoint. The, the checkpoints are nice and big as well. So they're, you know, regardless of the vehicle, you know, you probably won't. You, you're less likely to miss it. Let's go with that. And yeah, there was a bonus checkpoint. It took me straight through a military base. So yeah, they were pretty angry with me by the time I got through that and they did chase me for the rest of that race. It was a ton of fun. And the the races actually employ the many different types of vehicles and even and this is perhaps where I should pull in that this does have a multiplayer and there's a you know there's a genuine modding community for this. It's again, it's the the engine really lends itself to to modding. And the the multiplayer started as it's it's online only, and it started as just a modification that really grew in popularity. Then it was officially picked up. It's now free download on Steam. So I swear Steam are not paying me, but yeah, it's. It's worth using the game through Steam for for the the multiplayer. The multiplayer has a number of different servers, some for role playing, and one of these are is for racing. And the the racing for multiplayer has you know car to car collision has been turned off. You can spectate. You can vote to skip races, and you know it it plays really well with, I tried, you know, one race, I, there were, there were two dozen racers, there was absolutely no lag. So, so yeah, now tying it back into just, in general, the races, there's basically races for every type of movement, like, there's one for grappling around, there, there are ones for flying, the, you know, there are ones for driving, sailing, so so yeah. By the way, on water, the the top of water actually has fall damage. So if you you know leap out from high enough, and you don't you know use the parachute to break the fall, the water will break the you know the fall, your bones. Yeah, and everyone can swim, and you can fire a one hand weapon from the water. So if enemies just like you know, if you if you get enemies to drive out into the water and you yourself end up in the water, they might just come out and shoot at you from from there. And they won't be that much less 
of a danger there also because there's not a lot you can do in water. You know, you can you can submerge and yeah, but on the whole, there's not a ton you can do there. Anyway, the races. So so yeah, there are all these different ones and. Yeah, it's it's just a, a ton of fun. Now, heat in general, just you know, the more you destroy, the higher you'll get in heat. And if you wait for a while, the you know the the heat will diminish. Which, come on, fellas, we all know if you wait too long, she's no longer in heat. You know what I'm saying. Anyway, yeah. Outside of you know missions and races, there's not a lot you can do, and you know this is again where Grand Theft Auto is more interesting. You know you can go on a robbing spree. There are turf wars. You know, yeah, there are, there are things to do, and in this there really aren't. And I found that that's it's really too bad because it could be done like you know off the you know some something i thought of as you know preparing for this review you could you know be a, a chauffeur maybe you could run drugs or guns and there could be you know danger along the way you know where again it it would maybe somewhat take the form of escort kind of thing you know I mean, there there is at least one faction mission where you literally do have to keep, you know, your your cargo safe. I think you're driving a a truck and it has a bunch of boxes on the back of it, and if you drive too fast, some of them might fall off. If too many of them fall off, you just have to do that over again. And the it does also have two. You know, there, there aren't quite enough different things, you know, just outside of outside of extracurricular activities, the game just does not really the only thing you can do is this you know, very over the top action and these tense action scenes, which start right away, right from the first mission. Like with the first one, you start the game in free fall, you know, and then you have to kill some people, you have to, you know, keep yourself alive with a lot of people gunning for you and, and these things. But and and the action certainly is fun, but like I said, before you've completed the game, you will probably be somewhat you know, it just won't have quite the same appeal because there is not really anything else to it. After a while you've just done everything, you know. And again, it really didn't need to be like the first one had some, you know, some stealth, and this one really could have had stealth as well. The, you know, some some of the things that I thought of was to try not to get spotted, and if you're spotted, maybe you know you can only. You know, you you have to be very careful about when to engage enemies. So again, if you're if you're spotted and you're in the wrong position, you just have to do that over again. And you know, maybe there are some silent killing methods, or you you only stun enemies. You know, if you blow anything up, maybe it's just to slow down or distract enemies. You know, maybe you have to flee an area sometimes from after a stealth mission whilst being attacked and you can't attack back so you just have to be very careful and very fast in, in getting away, in, in getting clear of the enemy attackers, you know. Heck, there, you could have like one bit where you were just leaping between these different, you know, Whenever you're at a stunt position on, well, any any car at least, or if you're just on the ground, you can jump to stunt position on any car that you you know, and 
Yeah, I mean, you you could have like several, like like a minor convoy, and you're just jumping from one car to another while the enemy is firing like rockets at one after another, and you have just, you know, you hear the rockets firing, and then you have like a second or so to jump to the next car. You know, you you could have a ton of fun with this stuff. You know, maybe you could use the the cell phone to call in some C4 either to distract or just to blow something up that you can't currently get to. You know, you could call in some assistance from, you know, a faction ally. Maybe these should all be, like, doing, you know, doing them for factions. Or, you know, actually some of them could be agency as well, and they could be agency allies. And you could call them in, and they could be the Assassin's Creed from to an onwards style help that you hire. And, you know, that could be where you spend some of your money. You know, you could use them to fight some enemies and thus draw fire there. You could use them to lead the, the enemy on a goose chase. While goose chase, you know, the, the game could give you less ammo. I mean, you already have quite a bit of limited, you know, ammo is very limited in the game, but you could make it even less, you know. You could use the grappling hook as a tripwire, you know, tether it from two different places. And, I mean, you can you can almost do this already. I'm not sure if you can use it to, like, if an enemy passes through it, it actually works as a tripwire, but, you know, yeah, this would be a good thing to do with stealth. It would be a way to take out an enemy who's patrolling, and, you know, whenever you tether in the game, you can only tether once, and then the next time you use the grappling gun, you know, the tether will be disengaged. So, yeah, with that, you could only trip one enemy at a time. Now, there could be, like... Actually, I suppose that more or less... But, but yeah... You, you see my point. There's a lot of stuff that you could do with, with stealth. Now, someone on a review online said that you could play this more, you know, you, you don't have to go for the OTT action. You can take it slower and be precise. Now, I find that saying this is a bit like saying that you can play, you know, Hitman, you know, from two and onwards, just killing everybody. Yeah, you can, but the game isn't really, you know, it's not really made for that and won't really reward you. It's possible, but, you know, then you might as well be playing a game that is actually made for that. Now, the, the game, again, has very much of a an arcade style going forward. And, you know, it will literally pop up stats for, if you know, it'll say so and so many objects destroyed within the last 60 seconds, so and so many enemies killed within the last, you know, 60 seconds, so and so many enemies killed with by making them fall from high up enough, you know, yeah, various things. The game has hundreds of vehicles for you to use, and they are different enough that it's worth, you know, seeking out and trying the various ones. Some some of the unfortunate kind of You know, you, you do a lot of destruction like, and it does get you closer to missions, but you don't really feel like you're putting a dent in the government. And this is whether, you know, it's a faction mission or or causing or, you know, doing sabotage, as it's called. Excuse me, destroying government property. And, the, yeah, that's, that's really unfortunate. Again, you know, in Grand Theft Auto, you really feel like each mission accomplishes something. It might not be a huge step, but it's a step in the right direction. It's an important step. One thing I should mention is the 
some missions, it might especially be agency missions, immediately after you have this propaganda which you know you, you intercept on your like radio or whatever and it will literally explain away what just happened. You know, no no no, you didn't hear an explosion. It was just, you know, fireworks or you know, and or it'll say, Don't worry, we have everything under control. This this kind of thing. And you also feel like I mean, I think the bad guy's supposed to be, you know, Kim Jong, I guess at the time of this, eh, maybe it was Boon. Any, anyway, I really feel like there should be some kind of, you know, they could use the, the propaganda thing to, you know, have myths about him the way that the North Koreans have, you know, they're, they're told myths and legends about, which, you know, they, they don't consider them myths and legends, or they're not supposed to. Anyway, and yeah, it, it because as honestly as it ends up, you don't have that much of a you know he doesn't un, until the end of the story mode. I barely thought about Baby Penao at all. I mean, he doesn't show up and do a lot of stuff. So yeah, uh, I, I meant to say about the the stealth. Some of you know you could explain away these various you know you could it could be that you know the, the limitations maybe it's too close to some you know well protected enemy so if you get you know if you if you're found out you know maybe maybe it's inside and they would just lock down the building and you'd be killed you know and you could you know, you could do maybe surveillance. You could have to, you know, assassinate someone very carefully. I mean, you assassinate plenty of people in this, but you know, in, in these stealth missions, there, you know, yeah, it could be that you have to avoid being detected whilst doing this. They could have some variety to these. Now, I already mentioned that a lot of the missions, the faction missions, don't really have I suppose, yeah, missions in general don't have a ton of variety to them. Basically, you, you know, it's, I realize I, I already said that, never mind. The, 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 uh, the world of this is gorgeous, like the graphics are really great, and the, yeah, this world is very much a playground for you to cause chaos in. Vehicles often blow up. If, if you left a vehicle and it, you know, and there's some kind of impact, it hits something, even if it's just a car driving even slowly into a tree, it'll probably blow up. So, yeah, like I said, very much, you know, this big action blockbuster. Now, the there are not very many health packs in the game, which I think is quite good. I mean, if you again, if you if you do get killed, you heal completely, unless it's like I'm not sure. Actually, you might on on checkpoints for missions as well. But yeah, when you're in a situation, you you know, you have to find a health pack, and these are all static, and and use it right there, or you just have to survive. And this does mean, again, you really have to be careful. Now, smaller wounds will heal over time, as long as you're not taking damage. But yeah, now the game is very. It, it goes out of its way to not. Be realistic in the slightest. The score has, you know, it's fast-paced spy music. Whenever it's, you know, when when you're in chase or action scene or the like, and there's some nice ambient music as well. So you always, no matter where you are, it feels right and it just it fits. 
Now, uh, unlike Grand Theft Auto, the, the different factions, you never actually fight one, you know, one, one mission for a faction is never going to go against another faction. And that's, that's something that's really fun in Grand Theft Auto. You know, one day, you, f you know, on the first day you might be working for this mobster. On the second or third day, you might be working against him. Maybe you're even, you know, like generally destroying something that he, you know, something big and important of his. But enough about castration. The the first one had different approaches to missions, especially the agency missions, where like there would be different paths to you know into an area that you have to get into. You know, and maybe if if there's a car that you have to, you know, take care of if if there's a guy in a car and you just have to kill that guy. You can destroy the car, you can take over the car and then, you know, use that to kill him. And there's even some basic stealth. And in this, again, with the general lack of variety, that really would have helped a lot. You're usually inside, you're outside, rather, and this is, of course, in part because of how much this is geared towards this very free... I mean, parachuting and grappling isn't that useful inside. And that's, again, where the stealth could be... A, a lot of that could be inside, for example. And also, the game does use this... Does, does use that, you know, you're not, like, invincible. You can't do just anything you want, and sometimes it puts you inside specifically so you have to be more careful. And when you... Actually, I mentioned earlier that the mission where you have to stop bombs on skyscrapers, you know, you, you can't do that if you don't know how to use, you know, the... if you're not good at using the grappling gun and the the parachute and the like, you know, otherwise you just, there's no way you're gonna, yeah. Now, I already mentioned collectibles and the upgrade system. Now, outside of the upgrade system, I'll get to the upgrade system momentarily, you have collectibles that are just for the different you know, factions. Like, one of them is this tribal people, and, you know, you have to find sacred skulls of their ancestors or something. And, you know, but when, you know, the the, the ones that are for the, the upgrading, you know, the, the most basic is the armor part. And this, I think it's every five of these parts upgrades your maximum health. So there still isn't any, you know, temporary armor, where in Grand Theft Auto, when you're preparing for a mission, you may just want to get some body armor or the like. In this, there's, there's nothing like that. But other than that, you do prepare for missions because you do choose what weapons to bring and, you know, whether to heal or not. So that's, that's good. Now the other two collectibles for and the ones that are very specifically for the upgrade system are vehicle parts and gun parts. And any vehicle or gun that you you know that there is in the in in the black market menu, which I believe is the the guns I think they're more or less all the guns in the game. The vehicles aren't, obviously, because there are so many. But yeah, so you can go in there and you can upgrade any of these, and it'll take you know a certain amount of upgrade parts. And it's just you know you just choose whether or not to upgrade and when to upgrade. You don't actually. 
you know, you don't choose like like it it'll increase like clip capacity and you know damage done. You don't choose one or you know one or the other of these in different stats. It just upgrades all of them. I, I should mention, like I said, when when you die outside of a mission or a race, you come back at a stronghold at the nearest stronghold to where you died. So that does mean that you choose, you know, to a, to an extent, you choose how many, you know, when you take these various strongholds, and you, you know, they they're right there on the map. So you also choose where to take one. So you know, you can go like, well, if I die in that area, I don't want to go all the way back here. So I'll just go for, you know, a stronghold there. Now, debris appears to be harmless to you. It does sometimes, I mean, explosions will hurt, but debris don't hurt. And it's, I, I feel like that's a missed opportunity. That would again be, you know, if you, if you blow something up and then you have to hurry out of the way of, because they do put a lot of effort into this debris. I mean, when you blow something up, it's not just going to, I mean, the, the bigger it is, the more elaborate it will fall apart. You know, these big cranes and statues and such fall into, you know, collapse into multiple, you know, very detailed parts. It looks great. So it would really add a lot if this also meant, you know, and, and it can do damage to the, to, to other you know, government property, you know, if you, you know, sometimes when something, when you make something collapse, it'll destroy something underneath it. So, yeah, I feel like that would have been a good thing to, yeah. Now, there is unfortunately, unfortunately no base defense in this. Like I said, you take over strongholds, but the other, it never happens the other way around. I mean, this is one of the really fun parts of Assassin's Creed Revelations when you have to defend a base from the, you know, there's a certain amount. I mean, in this, it, it would give the the allied, you know, AI, you know, characters in the game something to do, which a lot of the time they really don't. You know, it would there could be the limitation that there's a certain amount of time or a certain amount of enemies that, you know, you, you have to defend it for so and so long and you have to take out this and this many enemies and then afterwards they'll give up, you know, or the like. It'll, it's just too much trouble, at least for the time being. You know, you could, you could be forced to stay inside the base but otherwise free, so you know you're going back and forth between like I mean there are anti-aircraft aircraft guns in this game that you can man you can't man SAM sites, but yeah you know man an anti-aircraft gun to take out this or that you know flying thing or the the like you know then hurry over to you know deal with a small group of enemies that came through this area, but, you know, there's no real mounted gun or something aimed at that, so, yeah. Maybe man a mounted gun for some other, you know, like, I mean, maybe part of it is that they're trying to just, you know, drive straight through the, the entrance, and you could have to man a, you know, a man a mounted gun, and there's like, you know, four or five Jeeps that are just headed straight in there, and you just have to take out all of them. And if one gets through, disengage the mounted gun, hurry in and and kill him, you know. And if they, yeah, it it could really work. And it again would give something. I mean, you're almost always just destroying other people's property, and obviously that's a fun thing to do. But it would really be cool if there's also yeah if, if there were other things to to do as well now the 
I suppose that more or less covers it. Yeah, the... The, the there there are you know controls for tilting the motorcycle up and down, and th that's really useful for keeping the balance on you know on on more difficult terrain and the like. Now about controls, they are again great. Some some say that flying is a bit you know could be better. I personally think it's it's quite good, and certainly any vehicle, anything you do in this game, the controls are good for it. They're they're easy to learn. The I mean you're pretty much always just using you know I mean, control and shift to you know you know for a helicopter it's up and down for a uh, a plane, it's speed up, slow down. You know, motorcycle, it's tilt up and tilt down. Yeah, it's it's always there's there's always yeah, it's it's very easy to get into in in that respect. Now that does not mean that all of the handling is good. Some of it is just really bad and some of the also kind of some of them are, are bad even when compared to I mean some of the handling is eh, meh in, in Grand Theft Auto some of the handling in this is, is worse like there's there's some skidding excessive drifting and something that really feels off to this is that readjusting can really take a long time for the uh, yeah it, and and when it's such a over the top game yeah in fact there are a couple of things on that the like I already mentioned you can't carry that much ammo and I personally find that this is this is quite appropriate because it means you may have to swap guns or certainly at least grab ammo from enemies like if you weren't at all going for ammo from enemies you know why even bother going near where an enemy who you killed is you know so it does again mean that you know you choose what to do you know you don't have to pick up ammo you don't have to swap to a different gun, but then you do have to find something else to use. So, and the, I suppose that more or less covers that. So yeah, one place where, I've already mentioned that the price for, you know, stuff in the black market is steep, and the prices are steep, and I appreciate that it's for it's it's because it's for emer emergency use. You know, if I mean a lot of these vehicles do spawn in the you know around the map. So you know, if you've you know if you go to a military base or a faction stronghold, you might be able to pick up some nifty hardware there, and then it just you know. So while you can also order it, ordering it is if you're like on a mission and you're like there's nothing near me, or not on a mission anyway, if you're like, there's nothing that like that near me, so I'm just, I'm, but I need it, or I want it, so I'm going to order it. It's like that, you know, but, but still it can lead to a bit of whiplash in it being one of the only aspects that really do, does, you know, put some kind of limit to, you know, what you can do in the game. Now, gun use, you again can, I mean, this one gets rid of the, you know, the dual wielded infinite ammo gun that the first had as an always backup. In this you only have three guns. You can dual wield any two guns, 
that any two one-handed guns, and then you can carry one two-handed gun. And with the limited ammo, you really want to make the right choice for these. You know, you can carry around a rocket launcher, but it might only have like 12 rockets tops, whereas an assault rifle is more common and has like almost 200 bullets to it. So, yeah. Now the you know you, you have some of the different. I mean, I already mentioned you know two-handed weapon might be a, an assault rifle, a rocket launcher. Sniper rifle, you know, shotgun, these kinds of things. Now, one-handed weapons, you have various just regular like pistols, you know, desert eagle, revolver. You have a one-handed submachine gun, sawed-off shotgun, grenade launcher. Yes, you can literally run around with a grenade launcher in one hand and. In the other hand, you can either have a different gun, and these have separate triggers, so you can literally be firing, like, you know, if you, if there's, like, a, a sniper that you're, like, I gotta take care of this guy, and he's, like, too far away for a grenade launcher, launching a grenade, you can use, like, a revolver or a desert eagle to fire off a few quick rounds on him, take him out like that, then, you know, there's a crowd over here, pistol's not going to do much to that, fire off a grenade. And again, the real limitation is, might not be that common, so, you know, ammo could be an issue, and your top carry capacity is also not huge, so you'll want to think about how much you use it, and then be ready to just swap it out for a different weapon. And the, the swapping out is really well done. Like, there's one key for it, and you hold it down for, you know, let's say left hand, you hold it down to swap out your left hand weapon with whatever's on the ground in front of you, and you just press the button to swap out the right-handed weapon. So, you know, that's basically how you should do that you know, how you should approach that when, when making games, is what I'm saying. And, yeah, I suppose that more or less covers that. And you can, you know, with the separate triggers, you can reload one of them while you're firing the other. And, you know, you, you can reload in general almost anywhere. You can reload a one-handed weapon whilst, like, grappling to an area, you know. And, by the way, from parachuting, you can also fire any of your weapons. And by the way, the one-handed weapons, what I meant to say, you can either dual wield, or you can have the gun in the right hand, and then use the left hand for one of the two explosives. You know, so, if, yeah, you want to grenade someone, that's it, you know, or if you're trying to, you know, attach C4 to an area, but you also, you know, but then someone shows up, you can use your one-handed weapon. And your, your two-handed weapon is also, for the two-handed weapons, basically always, you know, your, your secondary fire button is for the explosives. And the C4 works in, works like that you, any time you just press the right, the, the secondary fire, he'll plant a C4. When you hold down the secondary fire, he'll detonate any C4 he's placed. So, yeah, you can go around mining different, you know, if, if several, you know, you can mine separate government property in, in the same area, blow it, all, blow it up all at once, if, if you want. Now, I suppose that more or less covers the weaponry. So, the both single player and multiplayer is, is quite addictive. Now, there are I've already mentioned there are, there are a ton of different servers, and you can basically you know you can interact with thousands of people via via this. And yeah, you know just find the one your friend is at, and if the various players don't really want to fight then that's, you know, they'll, they'll do something else. It's, yeah, but 
There is a running server for racing, which I've already gone into. By the way, I should say, on the racing, both single player and multiplayer, there are some really frustrating races. But yeah, another very common server is Domination. It's, it's not called, it's called Battle for Panal, but it's, it's the Domination game mode. And literally, like, you know, both of these modes, I didn't play too many of the other ones because role-playing game doesn't, you know, that doesn't appeal too much to me. But yeah, there, there are no NPCs, you know, it's all players. And in the domination, you can spawn to when, whenever you want, by the way. You can just, you know, click a button, 10 seconds, and you'll be respawning. And if you move during those 10 seconds, you'll cancel it, so yeah. You can spawn to any of the of the settlements that are owned by your your faction, and they power each other. Meaning there has to be a straight line between each of the different ones. So of these settlements, and the settlements literally are all the settlements on the island. So yeah, I, I don't have a number, but a couple of hundred at least. So yeah, one of these domination rounds, you know, you can spend hours on it and it'll still be going. And yeah, you know, maybe you got work, maybe you gotta put in some some hours, maybe you got maybe you have to sleep, you know. Some people do need that sometimes. You know, you can fire up the game, the the game will still be going, you know. That that match might still be going and you can jump back in, you know. So yeah, a ton of fun like that, and, and and yeah, you know, you can take apart, like, let's say you have several, you know, connected ones here, but then the enemy comes from in here, takes out one of them, if your base is here, then this, you know, the, the settlements you have over here are no longer powered, because they, you know, blocked off that one. Any settlement that's large enough will spawn vehicles, and that is the only the only place that vehicles will spawn. You cannot man enemy vehicles, but you can go to stunt position, and well, if you happen to be in stunt position on an enemy helicopter, you can fire through the, you know, you can fire into the cockpit, you can shoot the guy flying it, you know, so yeah, that's that's good fun, and you can man the mounted gun of an enemy, uh, an enemy vehicle. So yeah, that's also completely and and you can still you know, I mean anything you can, pretty much anything you can do in single player, you can also do in multiplayer. You just have to be prepared for anyone else in that is you know, or at least in domination. Again, didn't play too many of the. RPG ones, but yeah, you can do pretty much any of this, but so can the other guys. So if you're taking over a base, there might just be a jet attacking at some point. You know, you can have duels, you know, you can have dogfights, you can have duels, you know, they'll, and, and again, there are all these different vehicles. If, if it's a harbor that there's a fight over, maybe, you know, someone is using boats and the like, so, so yeah. And there is no black market in the domination mode, so you do have to, you know, vehicles. Either you're hitching a ride with, you know, you can you can hang under a helicopter, for example, you know, enemy or ally. And outside of that, you do have to get a vehicle and manually get yourself again, or you know, hitching a ride, you know, stunt position or manning the gun of an ally vehicle in order to get between these different points. So, yeah, it, you, you can't just, you know, immediately get over to, you know, behind enemy lines really fast. You, you need a vehicle for that. And again, if you're, you know, you can't bypass the settlements. You have to, the, the line has to be intact. The, the, the spikes must flow, all that good stuff. And, the the you know the the jets are get a a target lock and flare 
you know, th th these abilities. So that's good fun, you know, making for some really intense fights with, yeah. And you, and, and yeah, the, the vehicles that spawn in a settlement belong to whoever owns that settlement or whoever, you know, if it's a neutral settlement, I think it's like the one who's the closest to it, but yeah. So that again limits how fast they can move between, yeah. And you can be in stunt position whilst, uh, let me think, never mind. Yeah, you, several vehicles have multiple, you know, room for multiple people. And, yeah, I mean, you can be several people in a transport helicopter, for example. You know, you can, you can take a seat next to the guy driving the Jeep whilst the third one mans the mounted gun or the like. So, so yeah. And the, I think that pretty much covers that. So, yeah, in the, in the racing, the, actually, yeah, th this goes for single player and multiplayer racing both. The checkpoints are set to accept a specific type of vehicle or, you know, no vehicle at all. So you can't go through it on a different type of vehicle, but you can go through it on, this is especially in single player, you can just get, like, if your vehicle crashes or blows up or the like, grab a different vehicle of the same type, continue the race. The race, there, there's literally no issue there. They, they built it so that you can just grab a different vehicle, which, again, like I said, you can be chased. You know, maybe they do damage your vehicle. Maybe you see it catching fire. Okay, stunt position, grab the enemy vehicle, you know, drive on while your previous car blows up behind you, and there you go, you know. Panning around with a 360-degree camera, panning around vehicles still takes some time. And, and by the way, you can't in a helicopter because you use the mouse to turn, which does only mean you can straight with it. But that does, you know, they, they actually did put a look behind function on, and this is for any vehicle. If you're, if you're in a vehicle, you can immediately look behind, which also means if you double-click that button, you'll center view. So that's really useful. And again, you know, if it's one with a turret, you can be firing backwards whilst driving forwards, and you use the mouse to turn the turret if it's, you know, if it's a straight-up turret. So you can be firing in any direction whilst driving in a different direction. Yeah, with... I mean, again, it, I'm not sure I've really manned the tank in a Grand Theft Auto game since, like, Vice City, but in that, sure, you can turn the, the turret, but you have a bit of a different, difficult time making sure you're aiming at the exact right one. In this, you know, the, the turret won't necessarily turn insanely fast, depending on what vehicle it is, what turret it is, but you do get you know, the, the sights for a, you know, so you can see what you're aiming at and quickly, and, and you can aim it up and down, you know, I, I took down choppers whilst driving in a tank at one point, you know, so, so yeah, that's, that is good family fun. And finally, the, the multiplayer racing, you, let me think, yeah, cars do not break unless you, like, straight up, if you land it on the roof, you do have to, you know, get another, you, know, you, you can respawn any time you want, you, you know, press R, you'll respawn at the most recent checkpoint, you know, that, you, you don't, if you don't crash, but you, like, drive completely the wrong way, maybe you, you know, you're driving on a mountain and you, you know, you're supposed to go down here, you went that way instead, 
you know, headed down the right the mountain, flying off. There's no way you're just gonna be able to get the car back up there. And obviously, you only have the one. You can't steal somebody else's car. You can't. You can't go to stunt position or immediately engage the parachute in this racing server. So if you accidentally press that button, it won't do anything. But anyway, yeah, the. So so yeah, just press the respawn button, you'll be back at the most, you know, like Arnie, at the most recent checkpoint that you cleared. And, and this is also for if it does break. And basically, and yeah, one of the only other ways to break it is some of these areas do have, you know, like gas pumps. Not many of them, but some. If you hit the gas pumps, your car might just blow up, and yeah, that's that's one way to break your car. If you are as determined as I was in that particular time to destroy your car, it's doable. And the the these races are they're they're not the single player ones. They are made by the modders, and yeah, I mean, both the domination and the racing clearly labor of love. You know, they put a lot of effort into this. And sure, some of these races are frustrating, but they are also, they tend to be very well done. And there are a lot of them. So, you know, you can be playing the racing mode for a fair bit of time, you know, in a row without it doing the, you know, the, without playing the same exact race twice. And then, by the way, that you can also skip races, and it's just you know, just over fifty percent vote to skip race, skip a race. And also on the the racing, you choose a color from you know anywhere in the spectrum, and you you know everybody uses the same vehicle, although at times there you do get to choose. I think I, I've only seen there being two to choose between, but yeah, sometimes this might not, even, and yeah, any player chooses between these two then. And it does happen that these vehicles won't be the same type. There's a race that you can complete either in a car or in a helicopter. And yeah, that's just a ton of fun. So. Ultimately, the game is addictive, a ton of fun. It's going to make you really lazy for the next time you play Grand Theft Auto. You're really going to miss that grappling gun and the, you know, the, the all-time parachute. You can still, like the first one, parachute, then go to base jump, then parachute again. You know, somehow he has an infinite amount of parachutes. So, yeah. You know, extraction calling in vehicles and guns, you're going to miss all that the next time you play Red Thug. Although while you do play this, you do also miss the, you know, all the personality that Grand Theft Auto has with the, the characters. And, you know, mission design, overall plot, all this stuff. But, yeah, it's, it's a ton of fun. And... You might not play it until you've done absolutely everything, but it certainly is well worth playing through the story mode, and then you know, then you decide how much longer you're gonna play it or not. I mean, when I completed this, I was at 29% or so, and it took me 20 and a half hours, and that is the entire story mode. So, yeah, and I certainly do intend to keep playing it. So. I definitely say this is this one is well worth playing. It's one of the better Grand Theft Auto clones. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.